Good evening, everybody. Good evening, indeed, and welcome. I'm so excited to say welcome to the Scandinavian GT Series here on iRacing. My name is Chaz Draycott. Welcome to Chaz Draycott Media and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is going to be an insanely exciting championship. I'm very, very grateful to have been asked to broadcast this. And what a place to start. Circuit de Spa-Francorchamps in the Ardennes Forest, the heart of Belgium. It's, it's a hell of a circuit. It's a great place to be. And it's a real challenge for these drivers. We have the roar of 6.3 litre V8s in the air. And what more could you want, eh? What more could you want? Now, one thing you will have noticed already, if you haven't already heard about this championship, is the fact that it is a one-make series. So not only do we have GT3 racing here this evening, we have only, only the Mercedes. Now, I say only a bit loosely, in all honesty, because it's my potentially one of my favourite GT3 cars in the sim. And very recently, it's been massively underappreciated because of the balance of performance. It's been a bit of a pig, to be honest. But what we're going to do is just look at some drivers out on track. Then we've got some very big names and some great teams in this championship. Lassa back for Williams Esports. Currently top of the pile by just over two, just under two tenths of a second from Carl Janssen of Core Sim Racing. I've raced in previous leagues with Carl Janssen. Very, very quick driver indeed. Alexander Lauritsen is third place at the moment for HM Engineering. We then have Yaltayan for MB Racing Esport Nordic as well. But as you can see from the left-hand side there, a second, just under a second, covering the top 19 places where we find Sindre Furaseth. We've got Kenneth Gulbranson just ahead of him in the Gazex Racing Norway machine. Plenty of wonderful liveries out there, I must add. Very, very wonderful liveries out there in this field. Such a fantastic sound. Kenneth Oswald is about to finish a lap. So if he does go around the bus stop, he does. We'll go on board for a lap of Circuit de Spa Francorchamps. Let's do that roar. 6.3 litre, eight cylinder engine in the Mercedes. You've got to love it. Hard onto the brakes then into La Source. The car will want to step away when you start turning in. Plenty of lock on the apex. Don't let it run out too wide on the left hand side because that AstroTurf will spin up all the rear wheels and you will be in the wall before you know it. Now you've got plenty of time to worry about Eau Rouge and Radion. Chuck it to the left, chuck it to the right. Manage to throttle over the top of the hill. A little bit of corrective oversteer. Kenneth Oswald getting a great run there on the car in front of him. Just trying to figure who that was. But couldn't quite see. Long run down the Kemmel straight now into Le Comte. Onto the brakes again. Chuck it to the right. Use quite a bit of the Astro. Try not to get an off track. If you don't know what an off track is, we'll cover that later. Through Malmody, the right-hander. Bit of curb there for Kenneth. Don't want to use too much of the curb on the outside. Down the hill. Very, very difficult. Long right-hander. The car just wants to go away from you all the time. The front wants to push. Now into no name. It's so difficult to judge this corner lap after lap and get it right. Again, careful of the off-tracks on the AstroTurf on the right. And down towards Puon. Oh, well, never mind. Not through Puon for Kenneth Oswald. Very, very sideways indeed. But that's just how fickle this circuit can be. You chuck it in there too hard. And it'll just go around. It really will just go around. Now let's have a look at Kenneth Oswald. Oh, there he is already sideways. So I'm not sure we're going to be able to uh, to go back and have a ganders at that. But yeah, that was a real shame. Carl Pedder Nordstrand has just beaten his lap for Coanda Junior team. He's now seventh in this session. Of course, at the moment, we have only Scandinavian drivers in this championship. That's the point of it. Just looking down the list to see how many Swedes we have in the championship. We only have four, and two of them are in the top ten. Carl Janssen, Philip Franson, Harry Kylin? Is it Kylin? I'm not sure about your stream, uh, Mikhail. Hopefully it, uh, hopefully it improves. At this end, we've not dropped any frames yet. The quality should be pretty decent. We're pushing out a decent bit rate at the moment. I've not had any issues with the connection, so hopefully it looks okay. Do make sure that it is running at the, uh, the best settings you can as well. Just love these cars, though. Here's Bjorn Atel Torstensen. 
in the Team Slow Mo machine. You're asking for trouble with a team name like that, if you ask me, but still doing a fine, fine job, especially with the the level of quality that we've got in this championship. Absolutely love looking down the list. I'm intrigued to see how people get on. This is Marius Skogland from Racing Performance Centre. Another very tasty livery on the Mercedes AMG. It's a great car to paint, is this Mercedes. There's so much real estate on it. You can get some very, very beautiful liveries. Now, there are some drivers out there in this championship that I have commentated on before. Anders Lillijordé is one of them in the Sim Racers World TCR series as practice finishes. The cars will disappear in a moment. Hello from Denmark, Tango's Malinois. Cheers, mate. Who else is out there? Mats Borg Anderson, another Sharebox TC Motorsport car. And I believe their other teammate is out there as well. But honestly, looking down the list, can't see him at the moment. But it is Mr. Gulbranson, not Kenneth, but Joachim Gulbranson. Now the cars are leaving the pit lane at the moment. Mats Borg Anderson is one of the, the many, the flurry. It's all about getting a bit of traffic out here. It sounds like there's a bit of shenanigans going on on the pit lane exit. I think somebody may have hit the wall. It was definitely the sound of contact there. But thank you so much, everybody, for the views. This uh, this view count is, is massive for my channel. It'll probably get a nosebleed having so many views. Over 75 viewers at the minute. Please do remember to give the video a like. Make sure you subscribe to Chaz Draycott Media as well. I'll be solo broadcasting the entire series. Solo broadcasting and commentating. So I really do hope you enjoy the show. That's Alexander Lauritsen in the HM Engineering car. We've got 20 minutes of qualifying now, so plenty of time for these drivers to crack on and get a time in. Lauritsen is not hanging about. He wants to, uh, to get past the car in front there, which I believe is the 335 machine, 365 of Kim Salverson. And they're already getting feisty, and this is only qualifying. Oh, oh this, this just sets the precedent for me. I can't wait to see how feisty this series gets. I am going to try and learn the liveries very, very quickly. It's usually something I can do quite fast. That, speaking of liveries, is an absolute stunner. AXA Simsport. Now, over here, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but AXA is an insurance company in the UK. Oh, I don't know what that logo is on the uh, under the rear wing, though. I do work for Race Spot TV, but... Yeah, they aren't. Unfortunately, they're not broadcasting today. Not this, anyway. But... A very, very pretty livery indeed. Seems like we do have everybody out on track at the moment. i show you the uh, the car numbers. There you go. Massive train all the way through to the bus stop. And I'm just going to try and see who it is that's crossed the line first to start their lap. The very first car we will see put a lap in will be the number 55 machine. Of course, Lassa back from Williams Esports. Now, let's have a look. And what he could do. We got to poo on last time round with Kenneth Gulbranson before we ended up off the circuit. Down towards o Rouge over Radion. Look at that. The car just wants to break away all the time, but Lasse using all of the skill he's got in his locker to keep the speed up. Flat out all the way down the Kemmel straight. You can hear the car just trying to break away a tiny bit as well. Hear the tyres screeching. Henrik, we do have live timing, my friend. If you want that, I can get it for you. Just bear with me one second. And it will be in the YouTube chat for you now, my friend. Thank you very much for reminding me. We have a lap time in the books from Yeppi Johannesson. 252.06, obviously just an outlap for now. Through Puan we go. With Lassa, look at the amount of work he's putting in on the wheel as well. Makes me think he's using a direct drive with the amount of tiny inputs he's got on. Onto the brakes, into the chicane. Oh, it's just so, so difficult to get it right lap after lap. You can see he's on the limit here. Off the throttle for a second there. 
and then back on and onto the brakes. Try not to use too much Astro on the right hand side. Onto the power again. This is a great ride here with Lassa back. No problem, Henrik. Hope you enjoy the show, my friend. Now down to Blanchemont, one of the scariest corners in the world. At night, this corner is blind. You've got to really chuck it in. Look at that from Lassa. You can hear the car floating through the corner. Onto the brakes, into the bus stop. Lovely stuff from Lassa. Plenty of lock through here. And he's decided that that's not going to be enough. But it looked very quick indeed. Here's Kim Salverson. From the number 365 MB Racing Esport Nordic machine of course one of the sponsors of this championship and be racing esport nordic you can see them in the top right with pixel esports and of course racing performance center as well it's great to be here and be part of this championship really excited to see the racing that these cars produce this season i must say joachim joachim gulbranson has been fantastic at bringing me on with this he's given me all of the information in the world He's been an absolute star in helping make sure that I'm ready for this. And trust me, I have been so excited since the day that he first contacted me. I've really been looking forward to this. We're currently watching our first and second provisional qualifiers at the moment, which is Jal Tayen and Oscar Bixrud. Again, apologies, guys, if I do get any of these name pronunciations incorrect. Do, do let me know with a polite message. You can send your hate mail in if you want, but honestly, just uh, just a nice message will suffice. It's very close already, though. We've got actually nearly two seconds at the moment separating the top 20. I nearly got caught out there by Malta Reimer, the privateer, because I commentate with a Danish gentleman on Sim Racers World TV called Hasse Reimer. Fantastically funny man. One of, one of the best doggos in the world that you will ever see, Stella. So, hi, Hasse, if you're watching. But Malta Roma driving the car this evening. Dropping down and down as more laps come in. We've got Team Vikings in that very striking Viking livery. The green machine, Alexander Arneson. Currently in 29th place. We have a massive entry for this. I believe we have 50 cars for this season. So hopefully, I can. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try my very best to catch all of the action all the way up and down the order. So, please do bear with me while I try. It's not easy to do, but it's certainly going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a good challenge. Now here's the number three machine, or there goes the three machine into the pits. Here's Matthias Jensen Come around the final corner for VG Esport Team. Sorry, VG Racing Esport Team. 60 cars. Right, I thought it was about 50, but I didn't realise it was 60, as Joachim confirms. Into the pits they go. Here's Chris Tapio, who has kindly, <laughs> kindly put his name in uh, how it's supposed to be, t how it's supposed to be pronounced. I didn't even realise he'd done that, looking up and down the uh, the list. <laughs> Although it seems he's got the uh, <laughs> he's got the <laughs> the SDK driver profile, so he can fill that in. I will have to try and sort that out. Unfortunately, Chris. Well, it is very entertaining to see. I do have to uh, have to sort that. So we see your your full name. Let's see if this works. Doing it on the fly, just to make sure this works. There we go, right. We do have that sorted. Never done that on the fly before, but there we go. So currently top, it's still Oscar Bixrud for Commander Junior Team. Gary Tyen is second for MB Racing Esport Nordic. We have another Commander Junior driver in third place, Benjamin Fuglisang. And then the fourth Norwegian in the top five. Oli Steinbraten for Gaza X Racing Norway. We're nearly at 100 viewers, guys. Very, very impressed at the moment. Thank you very much. Such a fantastic turnout this evening. Look at that for a livery as well. The Gaza X Racing Norway car. 
Certainly does look tasty. And there we go. We're over 100 viewers, guys, but still only at 20 likes. Let's boost those numbers up, please. Not that the, uh, the entry list doesn't need boosting up. We've got an amazing turnout. So we have this 20-minute qualifying session, and then we have a one-hour race, just a straight one-hour race to determine the evening's result. No messing about with sprint races or feature races. We're just cracking on with it. Good old-fashioned GT racing. An hours-long encounter that just does the job. Here's Casper Lund, currently in the middle of the pack. Thank you very much, Henning. Thank you indeed. Now this is the difficult bit. When you're in a pack like this, you want to try and get a bit of clear air. Look, they are actually slowing down here to let other cars go through. That's one of the HM engineering cars. It is Alexander Lauritsen. We've got Mikkel Hoygaard from ROS. You can definitely tell by looking at the side of the car. Chrome number boards on it as well. flying down the hill. They've also updated the sounds on the Mercedes very recently and it whines. It's got this really big gearbox whine. You'll see yeah, you can't hear it from the back. There you go. You can hear it from in bo on board though, definitely, can't you? Flying down the Kemmel straight, 260 kilometers an hour and the rest in the slipstream. If you get a good slipstream down here, a lot of these guys will be doing nearly 270 down there using all of the pace of these GT3 cars. Thank you very much, Torfin. I'm very grateful, guys. Honestly, I, you know, likes aren't everything in the world, but it's always nice to have. But honestly, I'm just very grateful that we've got so many of you here this evening. It's just going to be so much fun, as that's not going to be fun for Hoygaard. Well saved, though. Fantastic save, indeed. We've got Bjorn Atel Torstensen having a moment, it seems, in Team Slow Mo. Oh, he's just, no, he's just abandoned the lap, it seems. Greta Altorp maybe doing the same in the Tronso Racing Machine. Just going to loop it on exit. Now again, just decides to abandon the lap. And this is just how competitive it is, as Lassa back has gone to the top, or he's gone, yeah, back to the top, you could say, of the leaderboard. But this is how competitive it is this evening. You know, these drivers get one corner wrong. And they're just thinking, nope, that's not the lap for me. But quite a lot of the uh, the VG Racing eSport team cars out there tonight. Gorgeous livery on that machine. Oh, we've got Henrik Furuseth off the circuit. Oh, I think he was just trying to stay out of the way of traffic as well. He's back on the power. The Gazex Racing Norway car. Still trying to stay out of the way, bless him. That's the thing, you know, it's just being polite and being nice to the drivers around you, staying out of the way makes all the difference. Now here's a livery that we're not going to mistake anybody else for this season. Marty Yakola. And the Vikings, sorry, the Team Vikings machine. Looks fantastic. Oh, who was that having a moment in the background? Oh, Andreas Helgerud. That was a real, real moment up through Radio on there. The back end's got away. He corrects it. Big slide. How he doesn't get collected. Fantastic avoidance. Was that our second place car? It was Oscar. That was a real, real moment for Oscar. This is how it looked from him. Oh, he was very lucky there that Andreas didn't get even more traction and spit back across even quicker. That would have been a massive massive accident. Irico Lawson's just had an off as well in the number 56 car. Gorgeous green metallic livery on that car. Oh, into the wall hard out of Marmody. Doesn't look like it does too much damage to the car. So he may have got away with that. Mikkel Hoygaard also off, but just staying out of the way. It's very busy out there. I'll show you again. Everybody's car numbers. Look at that. 60 cars definitely fill spa Francochamps, that's for sure. Oh, we've got an issue there for the number 11 car. That is Emil Larsen, and that is a lot of damage 
to the back of that. That's through Blanchemont. Oh, heck, that's completely sideways on the apex. Gets a little bit of a tap, but then backs it into the wall. I don't think the brakes were going to stop that at all there for Emil. And now he's creeping back to the pit lane, unfortunately. So the gap's at the top of the board, though. Lasser back at the moment is nearly three tenths clear. Now bear in mind, it is a long lap here at Spa Francorchamps. It's over two and a quarter minutes, even at the top of the field. So the gaps may be a little bit bigger than some of your shorter tracks that you'll see. It's all relative, of course. But Lassa flying. Glen K. Messaged me earlier to uh, to make sure that I didn't call him Glen Key, as I was very much ready to. But it is K. MB Racing Esport Nordic. They've got three cars in a row inside the top ten at the moment. You'll just see on the left-hand side there, they've actually got quite a few in the top 20. Some fantastic names in this league as well. Really, really looking forward to this. I just can't wait to get the, uh, the racing underway. Down the straight comes Asga Radstead into Turn 1, the VG Racing Esport Team Mercedes. Carl Janssen has just gone third fastest for Core Sim Racing. Rouge and Radion. It's just wonderful to see these cars absolutely on it. All the way up there, isn't it? They're so, so quick. Now, you guys probably know some of these drivers better than I do. So who would you say your money is on? It's obvious at the moment Lasserback is one of the guys to beat. But we've got a Dane, a Norwegian and a Swedish driver inside the top three. So who do you reckon you should put your money on this evening? Oh, is that's a bit of a moment that you want to try and avoid there for Carl Janssen wobbling it around all over the grass. He still carries on. Carries on pushing for the rest of the lap, why not? Keep the heat in the tyres. Here's Matthias Jensen, 13th. I seem to always be attracting myself to these... Uh, VG Racing Esport team cars. Here's Carl Pedder Nordstrand. Nordstrand, I should say. Or Coanda Jr. Commander Junior team, obviously, standing out at the moment in the uh, the chrome livery. Now, if you are one of the drivers that is watching, by the way, after this has gone out live and you think, that's not my livery, then please do let me know. We do use trading paints for this championship, so if your livery is not on trading paints, then it will not show up, essentially. Let's see if there's anybody we've not looked at. Here's Sindre Furaseth. As look at that, Lassa back goes even faster, 2.15.3. Strindbraten goes into fifth place with a 2.15.908. Another Gazex Racing Norway car. This is the BSR Go Team Racing car of Philip Franson. Just inside the top ten at the moment. Now BSR is uh, throwing it back for me because BSR, British Sim Racers, was a community that I got involved with when I first started on iRacing. like to know what uh, what the BSR stands for in Philip and his team's case. Oh, there's uh, that's not an ideal place to be for the number 51 there of Lars Vidar Lovschus. What has happened to Lars? Well, I think we all know what's happened to Lars. Oh, was uh, Kenneth Palsrud <laughs> has had his own issue. Lars has already had a moment before this. I 
can't seem to yeah I can't seem to find anything more on that unfortunately Kenneth's got going again Lars has actually got going again in the background as well oh that would have been very very scary for the car coming through there that was Andreas Helgerud in the bright green machine the privateer Uh, Joel, there is a Discord if you want to find out more about this championship. I'm sure Joachim could point you the right way. Nearly 125 viewers at the minute, guys. Honestly, I'm so grateful. I, I never expected, I've just put it on Twitter as well, I never expected these sorts of viewing figures when, especially on my little YouTube channel, when I accepted the invite to broadcast it. But honestly, thank you to Joachim and his team for asking me to do this. Just watching Yaltai and just line it up for a lap now. Or is he? No, he's actually coming in the pits. I thought he was lining up for a hot lap. But qualifying has just finished, so these drivers will now get chance to finish their laps. And that's going to be it. Carl Penner Nordstrand goes in the pits. Matthias Burke goes in as well. We were just looking at Carl Frederick Hersug there. With the, uh, <laughs> just noticed his uh, helmet design. Oh, was he's behind one of his teammates? But I assume he wasn't going to finish that lap. Sindri Furuseth, most of the way around a lap as well. Matthias Dahl is just behind in a car that we haven't really seen much over the course of qualifying. We've of course seen the VG Racing Esport team liveries throughout most of the session, but. Matthias is not one of the drivers we've had a proper look at yet. Sitting 21st in the standings, but it's Lassa back that has done the job at the minute. It'll be interesting to see whether anybody can knock him off the top spot right at the death. Looks like all these guys are just calling it a day from their qualifying session. And we're greeted with another VG Racing Esport team car. Let's have a look at IGL Coatings E Racing's Kettle Larson. Or Kettle Larson. I do like that uh, metallic green that they've got going on. Very pretty indeed. And another car destined for the pit lane then. Let's get a like for the uh, the Mercedes noise, shall we? <laughs> You can see the uh, the chequered flag being waved ever so aggressively in the background just a moment ago. Emil Tangard for AXA Simsport is 27th at the moment. Looks fantastic on its way down to Blanchemont. I think I have to say, it's not often I say this this quickly before the first race of the season is underway guys but I think that's uh, that's my favourite livery of the bunch so far it's the fact that it carries on the livery carries on to the windscreen banner as well that's not easy to do that and if you are interested in learning more about iRacing paints by the way I have done a series of videos about it on my YouTube channel so feel free to have a look after the broadcast we want to make sure that you Catch all the action here this evening on Chas Raycott Media in the Scandinavian GT series. It goes nice and quiet as the cars all make their way in. And now we get our first grid of the season, which I'm very, very pleased to show you. Lassa Back takes pole from Oscar Bixrud. Bixrud, I should say. Carl Janssen is third with Jarl Tyen in fourth. Then we have... Oli Steinbraten with Benjamin Fugelsang. Philip Franson lines up 7th with Henrik Furuseth in 8th. He's followed by Nikolai, Nikolai Haheim. And Glenn Kay is in 10th place. Kenneth Ostwald just behind him with Carl Frederick Hersug. With Matthias Jensen in 13th. Then it's Sindre Furuseth and Asger Radsted. 
with Carl Pedder Nordstrand ahead of Alexander Loritzen. Kasper Lund is in 18th place with Dennis Björk in 19th and Kim Salverson rounds out your top 20. We then have Lucas Dorgard with Matthias Dahl and Mikkel Hoygaard in 23rd, just ahead of Kettle Larsen that we were looking at a moment ago. We then have Matthias Burke and Niels Erik Isaacson, then Emil Tangard and Thomas Torp with his teammate Idar Gerdvik just behind him. I'm giving these names a go. <laughs> and then we have Marcus Soholm, or Seholm, I believe it will be. And then Mats Borg Anderson, 31st. 32nd is Quinn Badams with Daniel Sondergaard in 33rd. Malta Reimer is 34th, and Harry Kjellin is in 35th place ahead of Havard Collin. Then it's Jeppe Johannesson, Chris Tapio, and Stefan Hjelvik with Kai Schubert and Eirik Olesen in 41st with Dennis Meisner and Stein Björk with Marty Yakola 44th. Greta Arletop is 45th with Alexander Arneson in 46th place with Lars Vidal Lofschus and Christian Hovden 48th. I'm just going to filter the rest of the grid through there for you now as we get ready to get this race underway because it's just about to be go time in this very, very large field. For the first race of the season then, Lassa back. Almost, well, over. Three tenths clear at the top of the standings at the very get-go. We'll show you more cars on the screen. We'll show you the top 25 at least. But here at iRacing, it is my pleasure... Chaz Draycott here of Chaz Draycott Media to tell you that the Scandinavian GT Series is underway as all of the Mercedes scream their way down to turn one let's see who behaves the best side by side three wide in the middle as well anybody dropping down it looks like everyone's behaved there's a few cars running wide on the exit but look at this the field is barely even out of the final chicane further back they're not actually out of the final chicane yet and at the front it's all go. Look at this. Lasser back then leading the way. Yari Tynan currently in fourth. We've got cars running a little bit wide. But what a noise down the Kemmel. This we're looking at here is Henrik Furuseth. Just in the middle with Philip Franson and Glenn Kay just behind him. Oh, there's a big move around in the field there. Big dive from one side to the other. That was Kasper Lund in the number five machine, the Axis Sim Sport car. He's got Asger Radstead. And Carl Petter Nordstrand just in front. Rob Ross saying I'm impressed by how he pronounced some of the names. Thank you very much, mate. I'm pleased that uh, I haven't butchered all of them. I know there will be some drivers that may not be too impressed. Oh, we've got Thomas Torp, who's actually not continuing by the look of it. It doesn't seem like he's carried on. But at the start of this hour-long race, then Lasser back doing exactly what he needs to do. But he's got Oscar Bixrud and Carl Janssen behind. There's a little gap back to Jarl Tynan. He's got Oli Steinbraten just behind him. Very close to the back. It's such a menacing car to have chasing you, this Mercedes. Through the Fanny chicane. That's the power again and the roar from the loud pedal. But look at this field filtering through. Massive train of cars. Oh, big off. That's Dennis Björk. Massive off for the 49. What happened, Dennis? We've had Skogland go around as well. In the RPC car a bit further down. Dennis Björk in the Coanda Junior team. Sounds like a bit of RG bargy going on just around him as well. We've got the IGL Coatings E Racing guys bullying Matthias Burke at the minute. Oh, and Dahl is around. That's Matthias Dahl. Oh, and he gets out of the way very, very quickly. That could have been such a massive accident, but fair play to Matthias for. Oh. Thinking the better of it. Oh, he needs to just join on a little bit later there. But look at that in front of him now. All of these guys bunching up together. That's Greta Altop. In the number 38. Hasse in the chat. Good to see you, Hasse. At the end of lap one of the championship. Lasse back. Nearly a second clear of Oscar Bixrud. Carl Janssen just behind him. 
And then we've got this big train. The Altai end side by side there. That's Henrik Furaseth just going past Philip Franson in number 18. They'll swap around. Another little one there. That's Sindre Furaseth. The Gazex racing Norway round the outside into Lecom. He's going to then have the inside for the second part. But the number 95 of Matthias Jensen gets it done through Malmedy. Amazing stuff. I love these shots. Commentator's curse is strong with you, Marcus. It can be transferred very, very easily. Marcus Seholm in the 86. He gets to watch this IGL Coatings e-racing group. It's like a herd. Herd of IGL cars. We've actually... It was Kieta Larsen at the front of it. He's lost out to Matthias Burke on this previous lap. Oh, we've got Harry Kjellin having an issue. Oh, that's not going to be good. That's a massive hit. Great avoid. Oh, I was going to say massive avoidance by the guys behind, but that's a monster of a hit. These are the moments where we're grateful that it's sim racing. Who was that? I think it was Bjorn Adel Tornston. It was. Oh, that's a humongous hit. Luckily, jumps straight to the pits and doesn't collect anybody else. It was quick thinking. Oh, no. Emil Tangard. What has happened to Emil? He's been off for a little bit. Oh, there's already a check up in front. Asuka Radstead was the card lost out. So, Hoygaard goes down the inside. Oh, the tiniest of touches. And then Emil was just the unlucky one. Nearly comes back to collect his teammate as well. Manages to get away with it. Now for second place, Oscar Bixrod is having to watch his mirrors now as Carl Janssen chases him down. Not too far off the back of this as well. Steinbraten and Fuglesang are quite close together. This is Benjamin, the Commander Junior Team Merck. Look at the pace these things are doing down there. We'll show you the exact pace they're doing as we go on board. So we're nearly touching 270 Ks, as I said before, before they come. Just shows his nose down the inside there to say, I'm not going anywhere, mate. I'm going to stick with you as best as I can. And it's no wonder that car in front looks good. The Gazex Racing Norway machine is done by eye liveries. The man's a hero. Now he's got one either side, so whether he looks in the mirror or looks ahead, he'll be happy. Glenn Kay just poking his nose down the inside there. That's the MB Racing Esport Nordic car. He's got his teammate, Kenneth Oswald, just behind. Then a tiny back. Tiny back, tiny gap back to Nikolai Haheim. Further back, Kasper Lund is side by side with Jensen down the inside into Puon. The pair of them stay side by side around Puon. They're going to go over down towards the Fanny Chicane now. Let's see who works this out the best because Kasper, if he can hold this, he's going to have the inside to the right hander after it, but he doesn't need to worry about that because Kasper just. Hangs back a little bit. Where else is it close in the field? Let's have a look. Marcus Soholm still in the middle of this fight. He's got Idar Gedevic just in front. He's still following on. You can see this trio. It's like a display team of IGL Coatings E racing cars. And this is a really difficult scenario with Marcus to be in here because if even if he gets past one of them, he's got the cars ahead all trying to take advantage and I must jump forward a bit because this looks nice and simple but it's not. Mikel Hoygaard has got cars very very close behind him and there was a little bit of an off for somebody there a moment ago as oh he actually comes in the pits now I think it was him that had the issue but in the pits very very suddenly there unfortunately thank you very much Anders I really hope you're appreciating uh, I'm, I'm glad you're appreciating the replays I must say up the hill through Rowdy on Oscar Bixrud has to really be worried about Carl Janssen now because Carl is going to just creep up to him but look Carl is lifting off he's not going straight past him he might just be fuel saving a little bit here maybe thinking if we battle we're going to lose Lasser back or we're going to drop off the back of him you could say as Lasser doing everything right at the minute at the front of the pack. 
So Holm has decided to have a go at one of these IGL cars. The car of Nidar Kjerovic. Down the inside he goes. Gets the job done. This is something feisty further back. The Wraith Energy Racing Machine of Dennis Meisner. Lovely bright livery on that thing. With uh, Greta Olatop just behind. The Tronze Racing Machine. Actually, going to look down the inside now, and then in 40th place, just behind this, you've got Kai Schubert. Oh, you did have. Thought he was going to go straight on there. That was nicely saved by Kai, to be fair. Not easy to uh, to save that when you get a little block on the way into the corner. Top-notch stuff so far from these guys. Havard Colin looking down the inside in the number nine Merc. There you go. MB Racing Esport Nordic car goes through and through as well. Matthias Dahl, that was very sneaky. Very sneaky stuff. Let's have a look at this. On board with Matthias. The door's open. He goes, all right, and thank you. Oh, danke. <laughs> Fantastic. Nearly 150 view got, views already, guys. I'm, I'm so grateful to have each and every one of you here. Thank you so much. Never knew that my channel would get anywhere near this amount of views. Oh, this is feisty. This is Nikolai Haim. With Loretzen just trying to sneak through down the inside. What was the outside of the bus stop? Inside of La Source. So just behind Matthias Jensen goes through. He's going to get two for one there is Jensen. Thank you very much. You buy one, you get one free. But now, if we dare look back... I don't, I don't dare look back because he doesn't need to. He needs to look to the left of him. Here comes Haim. Oh, down the inside into a route. Great, great commitment from him. And now Jensen's going to have to worry about the car behind, which is Hersug, because he's going to go through as well. It's not done him any good there. And look at that, jumping around, that Carl Pedder Hordstrand all over the back of this fight in the chrome machine. He wants to just pick off any positions that he can. Carl's got a bit deep. Not Carl with a K, Carl with a C just in front. Although he actually gets a position out of it, does Frederick Isu. With the smiley face livery on, he'll certainly be smiling after that. Although he tries to go around the outside into Bruchet. Or Brussels, if you're saying it properly. Through no name, manages to hold on to it. Great racing there from those guys. Nice and close. And nobody off the circuit or any issues. Looks like at the moment we've only got five cars. If I look at Marius Skogland who's unfortunately on his own at the back of the pack. We've got a couple of cars in the pits or out of the race, but not too many at the moment. It's not been very attritional. This is still going on. Hesu cannot defend from Jensen by the look of it. Oh, that was a real moment on the grass. Nordstrand trying to get in on this as well. This is fantastic racing from these guys. They're pushing like it's a 20-minute sprint. Miguel de Carvalho. No, this is eye racing, my friend. Not a set of course of competizione. And Lassa has done a 2.16.9 on race pace. Fastest lap of the race. That is insane pace, isn't it? The man's flying at the moment. Let's see what this lap is. It was 2.16.94 last time. Has he improved that this time round? He has as a 2.16.93. Someone's put a rocket in the back of his car. Then we've got... The two gentlemen behind him, but then Benjamin Fugas, look, look at that train. I know that V8 engines have naturally got a lot of torque at low revs, but oof. it is like a locomotive. Oh no, and Raymer's had an issue. Malta Raymer going off at the, the bus stop. I'm trying to get the replay, but there's so much going on that it won't let me. There we go. Let's see. Little lock up on the way in. Oh, just doesn't leave the room. That was the number 66, Stefan Helvik. That obviously didn't intend to make the contact, but it's a bit unavoidable in situations like that. Now, Ketel Larsen is going to be watching the mirrors, but look, Marcus Seholm doing the same thing that we saw earlier from Carl Janssen. Just using the slipstream to just stay with him. Not forcing the issue into Lecom. He's got past two of the IGL coating Z racing cars now. So he wants to make it a third as all in the background. Gedevic, Gedevic, sorry, having a bit of a moment and running wide out of Malmody. Now 
manages to collect it though and continue. We're back with the number three of Hersuk, who is still ahead of the chrome machine of Carl Penner Nordstrand, the Coanda Junior team driver. On it at the moment, really on it. Now, while we've got a moment, I'd like to open the discussion of do you guys think that we'll get the updated AMG GT3 coming to iRacing? Of course, we had two new GT3 cars recently, so if we're being realistic, we'll have to wait about another 15 years before we get another one, but what do you reckon we'll get the new Mercedes? <laughs> and on that note, do you think that the new one is prettier than this one? I do. I originally dubbed it an anglerfish because of its humongous mouth, but I do think it's a good-looking car. It's very aggressive. We've just had over 700 playbacks on the video already, guys. Thank you. Honestly, it means a hell of a lot. And please do subscribe as well. Make sure you subscribe to Chaz Draycott Media and you'll catch each and every round of the rest of the championship as well. That looked like a bit of a moment by Casper Lund there. There's quite a gap to Alexander Loretzen on the back of this train now. He's just outside the top ten at the moment. But the pace is very consistent from all of these guys at the moment. I'm really impressed. Hoygaard's just... Had a bit of a moment, it seems. In the ROS car. Looked like he went off over Radion, which is easy to do. It's easy to have a moment. Now, this is Casper Lund, who's just trying to poke through to the front of this train, but Nikolai holding him off very well at the minute. Just eking out that tiny gap. It's three tenths of a second, if that, at the moment. But Matthias Jensen is right on the back of Casper as well. You can just see him poking out there from behind him. towards Blanchem on the go. So fast through here in these cars. Nearly at the top speed as they're on the way out of Blanchem. Look at that by Casper Lund down the inside late on the brakes. Another fastest lap by Lasser back, but Casper Lund getting it done for Axa Simsport. Great stuff. Through he goes. Oh, it sounded like a bit of argy bargy. Oh, Glenn Kay. Right on the apex, gets it going again. What happened to Glenn? Oh, it's a chuck down the inside from Loretzen. Goes in too hot, smacks into him. A little bit clumsy from Loretzen there, unfortunately. But it happens. Gets going again. And who is that going slowly? Oh, it's the 53rd position is Marius Skogland and still still this is going on just in front apologies just trying to find the battle here Carl Pedder Nordstrand now trying to get past Nikolai Haheim and he does it as well by the look of it through Malmody although whoa, Nikolai squeezes him now on his right hand side as well Matthias Jensen gets the fright of his life Carl's already got past Matthias on this lap but Matthias wants to take it back off him Mega racing from these guys. It's so, so frantic. Absolutely love it. Keeps me awake on a Saturday evening, I tell you that much. Oh, that's going to keep him awake for a few weeks, though. Oh, Matthias Jensen very, very sideways. Oh, he just keeps it out the wall. How he didn't get hit by anyone or didn't hit anything, I do not know. But he's going to ruin that mistake for a while. Through goes Asker. Sorry, not Asker Radstead. Apologies, that was Max Borg Anderson in the Sharebox TC Motorsport livery. 
But wow, Matthias Jensen will not be happy with himself for that one. Very sideways indeed. Look at it. Carrying so much momentum. Just about doesn't get clipped there by the MB Esport Nordic team. I'm just trying to figure out which one of them that would have been. That would have been Carl Frederick Hersug. Just manages to collect it on the grass and get going again. Now Nordstrand back down the inside again. Carl pushing hard indeed. Through he goes now. So Nikolai has dropped four positions from where he started. And on that note, I say it's probably worth looking at the, uh, the gains and losses on the left-hand side. You can see that Marcus Soholm has gained nine positions. Kenneth Gulbranson has gained 26 in this race at the moment. Kenneth is absolutely flying. There's a couple of drivers further down that have gained nine to 12, but of course they have gained places off drivers that have potentially just had incidents or not made it through. Now inside the top 10, it's still very close up here. But they're all just following on at the minute, and it's the same again for first and second place. Lasso back, he may be really quick, but he's not completely cleared off from these pair. This is Oscar Bixrud. Carl Janssen just following him in third place at the minute in the course sim rating machine. Thank you, Henrik Tangard, by the way, who is also subscribed to the channel. Don't forget, guys, if you do want to see the rest of the championship, do subscribe. You'll get notifications, even if you've just forgotten that it's on that night. You'll get a notification as well if you click the little bell icon. Now it looked like Bixrod has broken, not broken the slipstream entirely, but started to get away a little bit up there, hasn't he? Fantastic shot on the curb there, love that camera. Hard onto the brakes into the bus stop they go. And honestly, if you've driven this car recently on iRacing, you'll know how much of a pig it has become. It's very difficult to get the car to behave constantly. does want to over-rotate quite a lot, especially when it's slowing down. Now, Yeppe Johannesson has got Mikkel Hoygaard. Sorry, Quinn Badham's just in front of him. Hoygaard is further back. Light delivery there on uh, Quinn Badham's car. That's a, a Turn Racing logo on the side of it, I believe. Turn Racing make wonderful sim racing wheels. Stein Birk has had an issue. There's already damage on the Buick Racing Batmobile. Looks like he's just waiting for waiting for cars to go through so he doesn't get in their way. Steve, I'm very glad you love it, mate. I, I love doing this. I honestly love covering championships that are as exciting as this. There's cars everywhere. And there's always something going on. And it's an hour-long race. We're a third of the way through it at the moment question is are these guys just going to try and make the fuel last as long as possible I'm pretty sure they'll need a pit stop during this race but sometimes you can just eat it out in these cars the ones that are in the slipstream <coughs> Carl Janssen should be able well he will be able to make it last longer than Oscar's fuel of course but it depends how long he can stretch that fuel. Now, this is the battle for 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, and 10th as well. Kenneth Oswald just on the back of this. And it's a humongous train just behind Jarl Tyen for MB Racing Esport Nordic. He's got the two Gazex Racing Norway cars, Wally Steinbraten and Henrik Furuseth, just behind. Flying formation. Now, you've got to say that Oli, who we're looking here, or Ole, is probably in the best position for this. 
because he's got his teammate behind him playing rear gunner. And that's exactly what you want. Like, exactly what you want, because Henrik can just defend if he needs to from Philip and from Alexander and stop his teammate getting overtaken while his teammate probably is just saving fuel at this moment in time. Because, let's face it, if he wants to push and make the move, he could do it down here. Sounded like we had a car go off the circuit just ahead there. Sounded like a bit of a, uh, a slide. And here's Marcus Seholm with Kettel Larsen just in front in the IGL Coatings car. His IGL cars have certainly been doing a good job of staying in formation at the moment. Really do hope you're enjoying the show, though, guys. My name is Chaz Draycott of Chaz Draycott Media. And I will be your solo broadcaster and commentator for this series. If there is anything that you think I could do better, then please do let me know. I'm doing all of this on my own, so I do want to try and make it as good as possible. Stefan Hjelvik just lost a place there to Emil Tangard who's trying to come back up through the order don't forget he had that moment earlier getting caught up in somebody else's mess as we all have before and there's his teammate Casper Lund who is under pressure from the ever exciting Carl Pedder Nordstrand he's just an absolute animal to watch at the minute it's great driving like a man possessed he's only gained four places from where he started but He's just been flying every single time he's on screen. He's always attacking. He's always just nibbling away at the heels of the car in front. It's fantastic. You could call him the ankle biter. Thank you very much, Henning. That really does mean a lot. Oh, well, that's not really what you want to see when you're, uh, when you're just driving along through the Arden Forest. Oh, Kenneth Palzerud car gets out of shape I'm not sure whether he did that all on his own but he's just trying to get it out of the way but that's going to be the end of his race unfortunately and Carl has got past Casper Lund this is how he did it chucks it up the inside just as Casper did earlier onto the brakes and through he goes and Athava is eye racing that you're watching right now People in the community would get very offended if you called it a game and not a sim. <laughs> it's close to being Asgard. Well, you say close. He's basically pushing Emil Larsen into Blanchemont. Very close together. A little bit of sideways action there, mid corner. Now into the bus stop. Looks like Asgard Radstead has uh, lost few positions on this previous lap, either that or Emil Larson has, I think Emil did actually Mikael Hoygaard in the pits, so too is Andre Sorensen Malta Roma, Kenneth Palsrud you can see them all on the left hand side there, but your race leader continues and Lasseback has done another fastest lap of the race, last time round, he did a 2 minutes 7, sorry 16.7 <laughs> Fuglisang in fourth place has done a 2.16.9. Doesn't look like anybody else is able to match that for the minute. But that is incredible pace from Lassa. And we did kind of forget a little bit. No offence, Benjamin. But the Coanda Junior driver is just doing his job brilliantly at the minute. Fourth position. No fuss. No mess. Nothing. Just getting on with it. He's got four seconds ahead to Carl Janssen and four and a half seconds back to the tie-in train now I'm wondering which of these guys is going to pit first in all honesty Alexander looked like he may have been going into the pits there but he's just trying to push hard to get past Philip Franson I can't help going on board with these things I just love the sound of it he looks down the inside to the source a bit late on the brakes chucks it in plenty of lock on sideways on the exit I'm not sure he's gonna 
be able to make that work. He is not. Down the hill towards a Rouge. And then up the top over Radion. On the Kemmel straight we go now, looking back from Philip Franson. Onto the back of this as well is Kenneth Oswald. He gets a good view of all this as they come into Lecom. One way, then the other. Thank you very much to those of you that are subscribing to the channel at the minute. It really does mean a lot. All the support is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve. Really glad you're enjoying it, my friend. I'm really trying to uh, to keep this as, as strong as possible. Now, a bit further down the order, we do have, in 23rd place, Nidar Gjadovic, who has got another one of the Gazex Racing Norway cars behind him, and you just saw it there. There was two cars side by side, but they're not actually for position. Kenneth Goldbranson, biggest mover in the field. He's gained 30 places so far as Kenneth in this race. The man's on fire. Just makes you wonder what sort of progress would he have made from further up the order. He's 24th, so he started 54th on the grid. Now looking at, he's, um, I imagine he's looking at at least a top 20 finish. But now the field is spread out a little bit more. It'll be slightly more difficult to get to the front of the pack. Oh, there was a car off there. That was Marius Skogland, I'm afraid. Marius has had a very, very tough time of this. Oh, the car breaks away mid-corner, catches the gravel, and it goes around. And it's a very irritating way for the car to go around on you like that. And Marius is now in the pits. Here's Emil Tangard. Looking back at Matthias Dahl. Now is Matthias going to line up a shot down the inside into the bus stop? You'd think so. No, nothing yet. But Matthias is... Looking racy at the minute, what can he do on his way out of the bus stop? Kenneth Goldbranson races in the real-life NSL series in an Audi TCR car. Well, you can tell he's experienced, he's doing a great job. And Henrik Furuseth, of course, who you mentioned earlier, Marcus, ex-Road to Indy driver, also doing a mega job. You can see the lights flashing for a moment there on Dahl's car. Down towards Eau Rouge. Hit the bottom, up towards Randy on. Now, Dahl may have lost a little bit of pace there. Just playing it careful. And it seems that was the case. I want to jump on board with Kieta Larson, who is chasing one of the other AXA Simsport machines. That's Matthias Burke just in front. And there's just been a little moment for Marty Yakola. The Team Vikings machine, that was contact with Stefan Jelvik. I think uh, Stefan just passed Marty Yakola. Oh, scary stuff. They're on the way into Lake Calm. Jelvik holds on. Now let's have a look at what happened here through Malmedy. The car looks like it's broken away. Oh, just off the curb, it's sideways. Tries to slow down and just gives him little kiss on the right rear. He's now back in front. No, he's not. That's Max Borg Anderson. It's actually another one of the IGL coating Z racing cars, which is Eirik Olarsson behind. We've had an off for Andreas Helgerud, unfortunately. Into the bus stop. Oh, catches the grass. He's very lucky there wasn't another car there, but he's very unlucky that the, the safety measures taken to put a barrier there actually gave him something to crash into. Now, Oscar Bixrud is still holding on in the Coanda Junior team machine. Second place, just ahead of Carl Janssen. Carl's driving a very level-headed driver at the moment. Carl is a fantastic lad, but he's also a very level driver. He's very, very entertaining as well. If you ever end up in a Discord server with him or being able to chat to him, yeah, he uh, he is very funny indeed. Uh, track, track, this is racing, and it is wonderful. <laughs> 
And again, the community will probably be offended if you call it a game, but that's them, not me. <laughs> it's all in good fun. It is all in good fun. Now, Jarl Tyon is not having good fun, or he is, because he's in the top five, but at the moment he's got this massive train of cars behind him, which includes Oli Steinbraten, Henrik Furuseth, Philip Franson, Alexander Lauritsen of HM Engineering, and Kenneth Ostwald. So this is half of the top ten, all covered by less than two and a half seconds after over half an hour of racing. That just shows you how fantastic it is and how competitive this series is as well. I'm scanning down the order and this is still going on. <laughs> Stefan Yelvik chasing down Asger Radstead. <laughs> no worries, track track, no worries. Welcome to the show anyway, I hope you enjoy it, I really do. As, oh, Stefan. Now, that was odd. Stefan Helvig just decides that that's that. He's been out of the pits and then, yeah, just, we'll see again here. He's flying down the Kemmel Strait and just yeah, decides that maybe his tea's ready or something, I'm not sure. But that's a real shame, that. It's always a shame to see somebody drop out of the race. New Bracing says, excellent commentating, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. If you are all sitting there wondering, why why is this guy doing it? Why isn't, let's say, Race Spot doing this, for example? Um, you can head to my website if you'd like. Obviously, don't do it until after the broadcast, but chasdraycott.com. I was the uh, one of the World Feed commentators on the Nürburgring 24 hours this year in real life. I had the joy of being there in person. It was absolutely amazing. I was co-commentating with Brian Oliver, and we had a brilliant time. It's not the only thing I've done, though, but, of course, there is a list, and I'm not going to bore you with all that now because there's racing going on. You can see some of the guys further down are doing their fastest laps of the race as well. I'm wondering whether that's because they've had pit stops and they've come back out with fresh tyres, although, as you can see, nobody in the top 25, at least at the moment, has pitted. We've got some of them showing some pit lane time, but that's just because they've run so far wide out of Blanchemont. Drivers from 45th downwards are the ones that seem to have stopped. And this is Greta on the top. Just currently going down the Kemmel Strait. Daniel Sondergaard is the next driver that is going to lap Grethel Arletop. But Benjamin's still very much on his own. 5.7 seconds ahead of Jarl Tyen now. But 3.4 off the back of Carl Janssen. So at the moment, he's catching the guys in front. He was two, nearly three tenths of a second quicker on that last lap than Carl and Oscar. So he's got pace at the moment, there's Benjamin. Definitely not slowing down for anybody. But this is your second place driver then. Oscar Bixrud. Holding on well against Carl Janssen. Not made any mistakes yet. Carl has just been in his mirrors for the whole time. But he has not cracked one bit as Oscar. Just shows how professional he can be. I say can be. Professional he is. get the concertina effect there into La Source and look at this some of the guys behind again doing their fastest laps of the race now Philip Franson and Alexander Lauritsen have come into the pits and they were well in that train just inside the top 10 Alexander Lauritsen the first car to stop in his box building up the revs gets going again it's only a dash of fuel isn't it and it looks like, has he got out behind? Philip Franson has already been and gone. Wow, he's had, he's had literally a splash and dash as Philip. And he's flown ahead. Well, that's made all the difference there then. Because there is Alexander Lauritsen. It means now that Jarl Tyen has only got the two Gazex Racing Norway cars behind and then a gap back to Kenneth Ostwald, his teammate. Down 
down towards Puon once again. 17th lap of this race. Feels like they've done much more than that, doesn't it, around Spa? We've got this going on a little bit further down. Alexander Arneson just on the back of Asga Radstead at the moment. Trying to get the run up the hill, but nothing doing at the moment. We've had Christian Hobden go off the circuit in the bright pink privateer car. Oh, just a little bit too hot into the right-hander. Manages to stop the car from spinning, though, which is good. It's very easy to over-rotate this car, never mind on the grass, but on the black stuff as well. But back to this again. Oh, Steinbjerg has gone off the circuit somewhere. Come back on. He was only off for a matter of seconds, but either way. Oh, it's not the place that you want to go off the circuit, though. Up over Radion and the Batmobile. Well, na 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 na, crash man, it seems at the moment, unfortunately for Steinbjerg. Gets it going again. Good, good recovery, to be fair. Flicks it back around, but yeah, he's going to need... Uh, and then his, his butler to do some uh, valeting on that. Now, Henrik Furuseth, as I was told earlier by Marcus Gietzal, thank you very much. Sorry, Gietzal. He's uh, an ex road to Indy driver. Certainly showing where he's come from. Now, did you hear that? We, we all heard that. We all heard that from Henrik. Now that is dipping the clutch in for anyone that isn't familiar with why that was doing that and thinking, oh, it's just an, an internet racing thing. No, that was nothing to do with the joys of internet connections and broadband. That was Henrik's left foot, or at least I hope it was his left foot. He's pressing the clutch with his right foot. He's doing a good job, but yeah, he's, uh, he's saving fuel there near the end of the straight. So some of these guys really taking the fuel saving seriously. Interesting to see if any of them can make that last to the end and gain further positions from it. I'm still very much under the belief that they can't go the full way, but you never know. This is not just sim racing, but this is motorsport. You always have to expect the unexpected, don't you? Marcus saying he does that on uh, when he's running short on f on, on diesel before payday. <laughs> love that, Marcus. Love it. Great to have you on uh, on this evening, mate, in the chat. Good to have all of you. Please do say hello. Let us know how you think the final third of this race is going to go. We're 40 minutes of the way through already. 20 minutes left. We're going to try and get some driver interviews afterwards as well. So do stick around when the race is finished. And you'll hear what some of them have to say. I can't imagine Daniel Sondergaard's got much nice to say. Oh, that was Greta all the top. I was just trying to stay out of the way. And if I'm honest, I think that might be on Daniel. Let's have a look for the stewards. At the end of the day, you know, Greta's on the, on the curb. But I know you could argue that a lapped car needs to get out of the way. I think Greta was doing all he could there. Such a shame. Now look at this in the background. Benjamin Fuglesang is really catching the cars in front here. It's only down to 2.1 seconds now between himself and Carl Janssen on the bottom right of your screen. It's fluctuating a little bit over the course of a lap, as you can see right now, but yeah, he's absolutely on it. And Matt's in the chat. I must say, you've got probably one of the, the greatest Scandinavian names I've ever seen. Is that Getstrom Backen? I hope that's right. I apologise if not. But you've absolutely hit it on the head. It is so cool to see some of the best drivers in Scandinavia absolutely fighting it out. It's awesome. Fantastic stuff by the organisers to bring this together. And I'm very grateful I'm the lucky one that gets to broadcast this, especially here on Chaz Draycott Media as well, on my own channel. Over the moon. They call him Grosjean back. And <laughs> Fantastic. Now this, at the moment, is Carl Frederick Hosu 
trying to chase down Nikolai Harheim. Again, I, I feel like I'm getting Nikolai's name wrong and he's going to hate me after this. But he's got, nice li he's got a nice livery. I'll give him that. Down towards Blanchemont once again. Where else is it close in the field? It's actually quite spread out everywhere else at the moment. These are the closest two cars on track. Look at that from Lassa back. We've not seen much of him. 2.16.7. Fastest lap of the race for the Williams eSports driver. He's now 7.3 seconds clear of these pair. You've got to wonder, though, is this pressure from Carl actually slowing Oscar up at all? What do you reckon, everybody? Do you think that this could be slowing him down at all? I don't really think he'll be defending or overly doing it because by now, surely he knows that Carl is not trying to get the position at this point of the race. He just wants to try and work together and go forward. I'm just intrigued to see how he manages it in these last 15 minutes. 44 minutes of this race gone now. Just over a quarter of it to go. Now Henrik Furaseth still behind his teammate, the Gazex Racing Norway car. And Jarl Tyen has done a great job again, much like Oscar has, of just holding on to his position, not having to defend too hard. The thing is as well, every single lap these guys are doing such consistent pace and this is such a hard car to drive at the minute. It's a hard car to drive anyway, you know, it's front engine, it's got that big beefy 6.3 litre eight cylinder lump at the front. And it's got that massive rear wing and chunky backside on it to hold the rear end down but even then, you know, it, it can over rotate very easily. It's a GT3 car at the end of the day. They are quite dependent dependent on their aerodynamics. Just enjoy the sound of the Mercedes as we go up towards Blanchemont. My pronunciation was better than Dave Cameron. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. Oh, Dave Cam's a legend, isn't he? Dave Cam is a legend, though. He could get away with anything. Now, I'm not sure if you all noticed there, but Lassa back did another fastest lap of the race, another 2.16.7, but a 7.1 this time. So he's continuing this pace. Kenneth Ostwald is gradually closing up on this trio in front of him now, so it's going to be two of the MB Racing Esport Nordic cars with the two Gazix Racing Norway cars in the middle. So it's going to be a Gazix sandwich. Not sure how that would taste, but each to their own. And again, you can see this other sandwich of just plain white cars with Carl Janssen in the core of it, you could say. But I'm just, I'm very, very impressed by how competitive this has all been already. Here's another trio a bit further down. Jeppe Johansson, sorry, sorry, Johannesson, Emil Tangard and Matthias Dahl. All of them have had their own little moments over the course of this race, so pretty exciting stuff for the three of them so far. Down the hill we go on board with the number 412 car of Matthias Dahl. Yeah, Marcus, that's a very good point. Do you think Lasser will make the rest of the race dependent on his fuel saving? I'm not sure, you know. Because some people are doing it very aggressively, so I'm wondering if it is going to be a pit stop within the last couple of laps. There was a rule added today by Joachim himself that said you cannot pit in the last two laps of the race. The pit lane is considered closed. I believe it was when you're... Yeah, it's, it's written as pit entry is considered closed the first and the last two laps of the race. Any driver not abiding this rule can be penalised. Penalty for using the pits outside of this is two, uh, sorry, 25 penalty points. So there is a window. Well, there you go. <laughs> 2.16.4. 
It's pretty much a 216.5 because it's 498, but wow, Lassa, that's just ridiculous pace. He's flying. It's a good thing that Mercedes has got the wings to keep it on the ground, isn't it? But yes, the uh, there is a rule, basically. You can't pit on lap one and you can't pit within two laps of the end. So it's intriguing to see quite how these guys are going to manage this last stage of the race. Oh, Max Borg Anderson has had an issue. Oh, is he just going to go in a bit too hot there? Yeah, we've seen this number of times. Oh, it's not even uh, that, that impressive, to be fair, Max. You can do better than that. <laughs> there you go, that's how you do it. Avard Collin goes around in the MB Racing Esport Nordic machine. Great flick to get it pointing the right way again. And off he goes. He only lost a handful of positions. Now it's kicked off somewhere because Andre Sorensen has also gone around at Puon. Oh, and he's gone back the other way and he's clipped. That's Greta all top. Honestly, Greta's had such such an exciting race, but that was a uh, wrong place, wrong time sort of moment. Now, track, track. I'm I'm going to give you. I'm you. I don't want to sound rude when I say this, but if there's one thing, one thing I dislike in being a broadcaster, it is being told, show us this car, show us this car. But as you've asked it as a nice question, and just asked whether we can see a lap from Lasser Back's car, I'm going to say yes at this point. We're going through Blanchemont, and Lasser is, there's no other word for it, hanging on to it through there, but listen to that fuel saving. Such a dip of the clutch on the way into the bus stop. Through there he goes. You can hear him modulating the throttle, modulating the brakes. Back onto the power and across the line. As one car laps another, he laps the pair of them. Into La Source. Big dip on the clutch again. You've got to be very careful doing that though, because when you do come off the clutch and the car gets its engine braking back again, it can really catch you out. Now Janssen has gone past Oscar for second place. And I'm not a million percent sure where he did that. We will cut away from Lasser for a moment, sorry. He did do it on... Yeah, it is on the Kemmel Straight last time round. Decides that he finally wants to crack on and get on with it. We're back with Lasser. Greta Alatorp is registered with several, account several accounts here, says Joachim. They're from Tronso School in Denmark. Ah, interesting. Look at this. Look at all the inputs and tiny little detailed bits of driving from Lassa. This is fantastic stuff. This really is a fantastic performance at the moment to start the season off. We're into the last 10 minutes of the race now. And that really is some aggressive fuel saving. I think what Lasser has done is open up the gap. It's 8.6 seconds. And then thought, right, at the end, I'll fuel save to what I need to do. But, yeah, I'm not sure whether that's going to work. It's going to be close for all of these drivers, no matter what they do. But I'm very intrigued to see how many of them make it. But thank you very much as well, Marcus, for your answer there on the uh, the fuel. Just to confirm for anyone that doesn't see the chat, when iRacing basically, they base their fuel usage on throttle position rather than engine RPM. So if you put the clutch in, it will increase the mileage. Technically, it should anyway. Uh, Goranson in the chat asked, do they save fuel more by cutting by clutching than coasting with fuel cut? And yes, in all fairness, they probably would. But we know that a big 6.3 lead to V8, when you're looking at it from a road car's perspective, is very much a thirsty beast. As, oh, there's a little chink in the armour there from Yaltai. And as into the pits goes Kenneth Ostwald. I think these last 10 minutes are going to be filled with cars all the way down the pit lane. But Kenneth is the first one to blink. He gets to the back of that traffic and he thinks, I'm not getting involved in that. There's no point. He'll be losing pace. So what he's going to try and do there is the undercut. 
He'll be coming in the pits as soon as possible while the other guys are still out on track. And then he'll try and come out ahead of them once they've gone in. Matthias Burke into the pit lane now. Number 52, Axis Simsport car. Anybody else coming in? I'm just having a quick look down the list, but no, it seems not. And the thing is, while Lasso has been doing that fuel saving, he's still opened the gap. It's 8.77 now, 7.8, 7.9. It's moving around, and he's staying ahead of Carl Janssen. Oh, that was... Uh, who was that on track? I think it was that. Greta all top again. Greta's gone off here. Oh, that curb. Oh, big moment. I think anyone that says they haven't hit that is a liar. That's a real shame. That's going to make you jump. And it was all oh, Daniel Sondergaard having a spin. Does the clever thing. Gets straight into reverse and well, overcommits to pulling it out of the way. Bends the wing slightly. <laughs> but still... Committed stuff there by Daniel to get out of the way. Now, now Carl Janssen is in second place. He's going to try and break away from Oscar Bixrud. I'm not sure how well he's going to be able to do that. We'll have to see. He's not got long to open up that gap, but we know that he wants to go after your race leader. Now, these two behind... Steinbraten and Furuseth are being so, so patient here. And they're, they're just playing the long game. Yeah, they're just sitting in the mirrors of Yaltayan. I'm pretty sure that some of these drivers now should be coming in this time round. Because if there's, what, five minutes of this race to go, I suppose if they don't come in this lap, they'll be coming in next lap, surely, because with five minutes to go... There is going to be three laps left. But I'm quite confident that if some of them make it to the end, then that's fine. I don't think there's a rule saying they have to pit. I think it is if you are going to pit, you can't do it in the last two laps. Kasper Lund into the pit lane. Just behind him there, Kim Salverson. Uh, I don't think they have a limited tank of fuel, no. Usually GT3 cars on most circuits, I believe, will do around 50 minutes to an hour. Sometimes just over an hour, depends on the circuit. But I think I think an hour is pushing it in GT3 cars. So the fuel saving and the fact that they can do the amount of pace they're doing while saving fuel is just phenomenal. I wouldn't like to try and go up against these boys. 120 litres in the moat used to be over an hour. Oh, okay. Interesting. They have given it more power recently, though. In in a, a very recent update to the Mercedes, they just gave it a little bit more power, apparently. So I'm wondering whether the fuel usage has gone up with that. This is Idar Kjedovic just chasing down Kim Salveson, who's just come out of the pit lane. A little bit of headlight flashing in the background. As you all know, that gives you an extra 15 brake horsepower. <laughs> they don't need to pit, but they are obligated to do in-lap in after the race. If you don't have fuel to do a fun li full in-lap, you get penalised. Now, Joachim, I didn't know about that, but I absolutely love that. I must say, one of one of my pet hates in sim racing, and especially in iRacing, as the car disappears as soon as you get out and put it back to the pits, is the fact that, you know, people will finish a race or just pull over and just stop and just the cars will disappear. And it, it takes away a little bit of the immersion of the broadcast. And there are leagues out there more and more often now that are forcing drivers to do an in-lap. And the fact that these guys have to think about the fuel to do that as well is phenomenal. So hats off to you. Hats off, mate. That's that's really good stuff, that. Now, further up the road, there is Benjamin. Who is probably one of the, the top drivers in this series that I'm expecting to get a message off saying, you've said my name wrong. And if I have Benjamin, I apologise. But I'm going to be saying Fuglesang. Or is it Fuglesang? Maybe people in the chat can help me. A for Fuglesang, B for Fuglesang. There you go. A or B. Now, Oli Steinbraten doesn't really care about that at the moment. He just cares about Yaltayan in front. Looks like he's on the attack this time. Yep, he's sick of waiting around behind the MB Racing Esport Nordic 
car. Is he just going to squeeze around the outside? No. C, fuel sank. Ah, okay. <laughs> Bird singing. Ah, okay. Thank you very much for the uh, the translation there. Yeah, like I said though, guys, you know, trying to uh, trying to get used to pronouncing a lot of these names out there, I'm sure you can all appreciate it's not the easiest, so... Thank you very much for your help on it. We're into the last, almost into the last minute of this race now. I can't believe how quickly this has flown by, in all fairness, though. It really has gone so, so quickly. It's been very enjoyable. But Jarl Tyrant holding on here ahead of Steinbrotten, but Steinbrotten all over the back of him. I don't dare look back. Steinbrotten doing an amazing job. Such a close chase between the two of them. Behind this, don't forget as well, we've got Henrik Furuseth. He's still holding on. Maybe just waiting for something to happen at the front of this group. Through Blanchemont. Now look at that. It's like he's let his teammate go. He's saying, right, Furuseth, you go get him. Fetch. Fetch, Henrik. Go. <laughs> There's cars coming in the pits. Benjamin Fielsang in there as well now. So he's had to blink, unfortunately. He's not really had the chance to fuel save that much. He's not had the slipstream of anybody. Benjamin is the Norwegian national champion in sim racing for 2020. He is. I've uh, I've had a look through some of these drivers' profiles that you've sent me, Joachim, and it's just some fantastic talent in this grid. And Carl Nordstrand, he's trying, trying, trying to go around the MB car there. Oh, he's trying to go past Nikolai. That, to me, sounds like it's out of fuel. He's dipping the clutch. Oh, has Carl overdone it? He really has overdone it, I'm afraid. But this is what we're going to see this season. These drivers really need to think about this. Well, someone that's not too worried about it at the moment is Lassa back. He's been absolutely flying all the way through this race. And he's been looking pretty much untouchable, hasn't he? Oh, Oscar Bixrud, no! Oscar's out of fuel. It's out, it's done. Oh, it's such a sad noise as well from the Mercedes. It literally sounded like it was crying and whining. Why have you let me run out of fuel, Oscar, it says. That puts Tyen in a podium position. We'll keep an eye on everybody as they come round, but the one person we need to look at right now is Lassa back for Williams Esports. What an amazing performance here in the first round of the Scandinavian GT Series. Clap emojis in chat, please, everybody. Lassa back takes the first round of the championship at spa Francorchamps. Amazing drive. Phenomenal performance. Carl Janssen is going to come home in second place. Very level-headed drive from Carl. And Jarl Tyen, is he going to hold on? Carl Janssen did his fastest lap of the race on the last lap as well. Jarl Tyen's going to get a podium. What an awesome performance that was to hold on ahead of the Gazex Racing Norway Trio. Oli Steinbraten back ahead of Henrik Furuseth. Good teamwork there from those two. Now Nikolai Heim chucking it into the bus stop once more. And across the line in sixth place, three Gazix Racing Norway cars in the top six. Awesome for them. Carl Frederick Hosug gets an MB Racing car in the top ten. Sindre Furuseth just behind for Gazix Racing Norway as well. Four of them in the top ten. Then it's Philip Franson in the BSR Go Team machine. Kenneth Ostwald rounds out your top 10 what an awesome race we just had there everybody as you see the rest of the field filtering through everybody just gaining the odd position here and there and is it a blunder WPS I'm not sure it is I think it's I think it's fantastic not to have limited fuel tanks in this makes it all the more exciting that the drivers have to make it round and someone that doesn't look like they're going to make it round I'm afraid is Mats Borg Anderson And 
And there are cars just coasting all the way to the end here. Uh, Isaacson, you're asking about. Um, yes, Niles Eric Isaacson has gained 10 places in this race. Kenneth Gulbranson, though, let me just say this. Watch this when I bring up the gains. 43 places gained for Kenneth Gulbranson. Absolutely amazing. Hats off to you, Kenneth. Hats off indeed. That is incredible. What a fantastic drive. Well done. Well done indeed. The Gas X Racing Norway car, untouchable. But when you say untouchable, you've got to think of Lasse back. Still with fuel in the tank as well. What an awesome performance that was by the Williams eSports driver. On the clutch he goes. <laughs> Fantastic. Just coasting it all the way back down towards Blanchemont. But you do have to make it round. You have to make it all the way back in this championship and you'll see everybody else just coasting. But it's great to have the in-lap. really is. And congratulations to Joachim and his team on a fantastic first round of the championship. I have thoroughly enjoyed this. Thank you very much, Henrik. I honestly really do hope you've all enjoyed the show, everybody. It's been a joy to do this. And I, Chaz Draycott, will be your broadcaster and commentator for the whole series. But we'll bring up some race results right now for you. Lassa back taking the win for Williams Esports ahead of Carl Janssen in the course in racing Mercedes with Jarl Tyen in third place. Then it's a trio of Gaz X Racing Norway cars. Oli Steinbraten, Henrik Furuseth and Nikolai Haheim with Karl Hersug in 7th for MB Racing Esport Nordic. Two of their cars in the top 10. Another Gaz X car in the form of Sindre Furuseth with Philip Franson in 9th. Kenneth Ostwald ahead of the other Kenneth. Kenneth called Branson 43 places gain. I still can't believe that. Amazing. Kjetil Larsen is 12th with Marcus Soholm in 13th. Then we have Benjamin Fuglesang in 14th after unfortunately running out of fuel at the end. Niles Eric Isaacson finishes 15th ahead of Kim Salveson and Idar Gjerdevik with Lucas Dorgard in 18th place. Behind him was Matthias Jensen with Jeppe Johannesson in 20th for Silver Fox Racing. Axis Sim Sports Matthias Burke is 21st with Chris Tapio in 22nd ahead of Eirik Olesen and Emil Tangard in 24th. His teammate Asker Radstead was just behind in 26th position with Havard Collin 27th and Mats Borg Anderson eventually classified 28th. We do have, after that, Kasper Lund in 29th with Quinn Badhams in 30th position, followed by Marty Yakola, Kai Schubert and Anders Lillejordi was on the, the last car on the lead lap. It was a bit of an unfortunate end for the Coanda Junior team, both of their drivers running out of fuel on the last laps with Oscar Bixrud and Carl Pedder Nordstrand 34th and 35th ahead of Emil Larsen, Greta Alatop and Daniel Sondergaard. Then we have Alexander Arneson, Dennis Meisner, Christian Hovden and Greta Alatop. Greta there in there twice actually, I did wonder. That's, I was going to say multiple accounts by the look of it. <laughs> no wonder Greta had such a, uh, an exciting race. I've only just noticed that now, have I not noticed that before? Andreas Helgrud in 34th, just behind Lars Vidal Lovschus, with Andre Sorensen in 43rd, with Louis Riesan and Malte Reimer 47th. 10 laps down was Alexander Lauritsen in the HM Engineering car. And more cars that didn't finish, unfortunately. Stefan Hilvik, Stein Björk, Mikael Hoygaard, Kenneth Paltrud, Glennon Kay, and Marius Skoglund, Bjorn Atel Torstensen, ahead of Harry Kellin, Dennis Björk, and Thomas Torp, and I believe. Yes, that is all we had this evening. But we have the next round in two weeks' time. But don't go anywhere because if I just rewind it to the very start of the broadcast, we should have, I believe, we may have some drivers waiting for an interview, but it doesn't look like it at the moment. We're just waiting uh, for some of them to get in there. Lassa back will be jumping in as well by the look of it very shortly. Although... I need to... Uh, <laughs> Apologies, guys. One second. There is an interview waiting room for some of these drivers to come and have a chat with me. But at the moment, I can't see it in the, uh, in the Discord channel, unfortunately. <laughs>
So I'm left with uh, left with nothing at this moment in time. So do bear with us, and we'll get some driver interviews. But let us know in the chat who was your favourite driver of the race. We had so many out there that did a wonderful job, and so many of them that just got involved in an amazing amount of battles. I must say, one of my very favourite drivers to watch in that race was Carl Pedder Nordstrand. He was brilliant, really brilliant, very exciting to watch all the way through. But of course, your race winner, Lassa Back, just flew away at the front. Before you go, though, guys, of course, I know uh, this is the point where a lot of you switch off. Please do leave a like and make sure you subscribe to Chaz Draycott Media as well for future broadcasts in this series. Look at that fantastic sight as well. All of those cars flying down towards turn one, La Source. Just waiting to be given access to the uh, <laughs> to the interview waiting room. I know we're going to see a lot of them in there. Oh yeah, definitely. Anders back. Lassa did an amazing race. To be able to to do that much and save the fuel is amazing. And to be fair, we have him in the commentary box with us now. Lassa, first off, well done. But how on earth did you do that? That looked like it was quite a lot of hard work, despite the uh, the pace you had. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, started uh, one day with the setup, just trying to make a good setup and spent the whole week, week probably making a good setup. Um, yeah, the car felt amazing basically and uh, had great top speed and great everything. Um, and then when I entered the race, I just wanted to see what other people were doing because I didn't know if they were just going to go flat out and take the pit stop. Uh, I didn't know how fast they were, uh, of course. Um, but my first the uh, thing I want to try was just to save fuel and do the target I need to do to skip the pit stop and uh, also keep the pace up at the same time. Uh, and uh, that worked uh, pretty well, so I just kept yeah. doing that uh, yeah, the whole race and uh, made the gap bigger. I was going to say that the fact that you managed to keep that amazing pace all the way through and still open the gap was what was most impressive about it, to be fair. And I think that, in all honesty, is, is that going to be your tactic for the rest of the season, do you think? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'd uh, like to, to do this again, um, but uh, I think uh, the other tracks are going to be different, I think. Uh, I think uh, Nürbet Ring uh, is going to be... I think we have to pit on that track. Uh, I could be wrong though, but uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be different uh, from track to track. Uh, I think Daytona, I think we have to pit one time. Yeah. Uh, I definitely think because you were using so much fuel in that race or on that track, I mean. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we just have to see uh, how much uh, fuel we use. Yeah, for sure. It certainly isn't the easiest of cars to fuel save in, but you, uh, you made it work tonight. Um, before the race began, obviously, it was quite close in qualifying other than those three tents that you have over everybody else. Did you think that anyone was going to be able to stay with you early on and challenge you all the way through the race? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Kali Jensen, I thought he was uh, he was going to be able to 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 fight with me. Uh, I was a little bit scared <laughs> going into this one uh, of uh, Karl, but uh, it seemed like I had a little bit more pace than him and uh, was able to yeah win well, the race. Indeed, mate. Well, it was a wonderful performance. And, of course, in two weeks' time, we hope to see the same from you. But before you go, is there anybody you would like to give a quick shout-out to on the stream? Oh, yeah. Shout-out to William Seaspot, of course, and uh, all the sponsors. Um, and, yeah, uh, shout-out to everyone who's watching at home. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, mate. Well, uh, great. No worries. Yeah. Great to speak to you, mate. Very well done today. And we'll see you in a few weeks' time. Yeah, sure. Smashing stuff there. Lassa back, your race winner. Absolutely heroic performance early on. And I tell you what, if he can do that again all season long, then we have got a definite, definite champion on our hands. But some of the guys behind do need to stop him. We'll have another interview with second place finisher, Carl Janssen, who's going to jump in and join us in the box. And we will have a word and see exactly what he thought of that one. Carl, it's uh, it's been a while, mate, since uh, since we shared the track together in a different GT series, but it looked like you, you had your head in the right place tonight, but um, not quite able to get the win. But surely second place, you'll be happy with that. Oh, yeah, that's 
for sure. Um, I didn't think Plus was saving um, until the last lap there. Uh, his pace was insane. Um, mm. I don't know. I can't say much more than that. That pace <laughs> was just insane. Um, and uh, I could probably have kept with him and saved behind him, but with the pace he pu pushed out or like the pace he had, um, I didn't think he was saving actually. So um, I stayed behind Oscar there and uh, yeah, I mean, I got everything to work in, so I got, to, got it over the line there. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm happy with P2 though. That's a good start for the championship. Yeah, for sure. And like you say, you got it across the line. Unfortunately, Oscar, who you spent most of that race looking at the back of, didn't in the end. Do you think that that was simply because you were the one that was in the slipstream and not pushing to get through and that was all it came down to? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, he was flat out the whole time. So, um, you know, at the end of the race, he ran out um, while I was sitting there saving uh, pretty much every straight. Uh, so... Yeah, I think uh, just it, that was what it came down to. Like, like yeah. uh, I was saving and he wasn't. So, I was uh, also saying during the broadcast, you know, a lot of drivers we saw were dipping the clutch in the braking zone and then bringing it up again. It's it's difficult to pick it up when you're watching, but it's a very difficult thing to get right, isn't it? When you pick the clutch up again because the car suddenly gets all of its engine braking back and it it sort of upsets it a little bit if you don't get it right, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. Um, you kind of have to wait a bit to get the RPMs to go quite low, and then then go back onto the or let let the clutch out again. Um, so it's a bit of tricks, but um, for sure it helps uh, since you don't have any engine braking when you let off. So you can yeah, basically yeah. just slide behind the other car in the in the draft. So. Well, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a very interesting season to see how it shapes out. Um, there are a fantastic, fantastic list of tracks that we get to go to over the course of the season, of course. And I mean, I, I for one, am very excited to see not just how these cars behave around all of them, but how you drivers adapt to each and every track as well. Daytona is the next one we go to. What is your opinion of driving this car around there? I imagine it's a track you've got quite a lot of experience on. Yeah, um, did the Daytona 24 hours in the GT3, so mm -hmm. um, should have quite a good start with that. Uh, obviously, this is way different from the Lambo, but uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a good start, I think. Uh, and again, that's going to be another track we have to choose quite a bit, I think. Um, and I think that one is going to be even tighter on making it or not. So yeah, because um, you, you're full throttle for so much of a lap round there, aren't you? Yeah, for sure. Um, basically, whole banking and an infield is is full throttle. So um, yeah, uh, I think that's going to be a, a very tough track making it actually. Uh, so I guess we'll see how, how that goes. Indeed, a lot of the time you never know till you get there, mate. But great to speak to you again, Carl. Thank you very much for hopping in. Well done tonight. And before you go, would you want to give a shout out to anyone? Yeah, everyone over at the Core Sim Racing, um, to uh, Racing Performance Center, and also to you for broadcasting. Thank you very much, Carl. Good to speak to you again, mate. See you soon. Later, mate. Cheers. Fantastic stuff. Good mate of mine, Carl Janssen. Raced with him before in uh, a number of different GT series on iRacing and he's a very funny guy and a cracking competitor. Another one that he had with him on track that finished in third position, Yal Tyen, who I will apologise to straight away if I've been saying your name wrong the whole night. You'll probably want to smack me in the face after this one, but you certainly look like you uh, you had a good race on your hands out there with those Gazex cars behind you. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, seeing as I didn't have any draft the whole race, I, uh, I really had to fuel save as much as possible um, and those guys also had the benefit of the draft so they were able to fuel save a lot more so it was a tough challenge mm -hmm. with that and, and back markers as well. I was going to say because when you're at the front of a train like that there's there's not really anybody about to help you is there because you, you might want just for one lap just for somebody to just go past and then you can have them again on the Kemmel straight but it just seemed like you were it was you against the world in that train there because there was so many I mean we're looking at it in slow-mo now there's just you coming into the bus stop with about seven or eight cars directly behind. It must have been an interesting sight in your mirrors. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of pressure. Make one mistake and you're you're probably swallowed uh, up by the whole field. So, uh, yeah, it was for sure all about uh, keeping your head cool and uh, and making no mistakes. Definitely. Now, next time round in two weeks, we go to Daytona, which of course is going to be even more dependent on slipstream and there's a, a bit more of the uh, the mind games go on there don't they it's it's going to be a tough one don't you think yeah for sure there's probably going to be a lot about uh being in the right position at the right time making sure you get the benefit of the draft and 
probably a bit of fuel saving there as well. So yeah, for sure, having a slick car down the straight is going to help you. It will indeed, mate. Well, um, I look forward to seeing how you get on there. Before we go, is there anybody that you would like to shout out to on the stream? Yeah, for sure. I'd uh, like to thank Daniel and uh, MB Racing for, for all the support and uh, Glenn for making a lot of the setup adjustments. So thanks to them for, for all the help. Awesome stuff. Great to speak to you. Y'all very well done and we'll see you in two weeks' time. Thank you. Cheers. And from our third place finisher, we now drag in our fourth place finisher, Mr. Steinbraten, who joins me in the commentary box. Now, that looked like a lot of fun there with your teammate, of course, just following along with you. What was what was your plan in that one? Because it seemed like it was very difficult to manage the fuel. Yeah, uh, so the fuel was really tight, so I knew that I had to uh, fuel set as much as possible in the start. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the incident point limit was set at 10, so I couldn't really go from you the... Uh, on the last lap there on uh, Jarl, so therefore I let Henrik by and tried to let him uh, overtake Jarl, but uh, yeah. it worked. <laughs> I was going to say, when uh, when the, the sort of team tactic take came in there to let Henrik go, I just shouted fetch and just hoped that he'd go after him, because it did seem like you'd sort of let the hounds after him, um, but like you say, unfortunately didn't come off, but good to let, uh, good of Henrik, sorry, to, to let you back through again at the end there, that's proper teamwork, and I was just going to say that having a teammate in a situation like that on track with you, it's so important in a series like this, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was so good to have him behind me since I knew that he won't do any silly mistakes. And yeah. We just worked together really well and saved fuel and uh, made it work. And over the course of the season, is that something that you're hoping to have at each individual round? Are you just wanting to make sure that you've at least got a teammate up there with you? Yeah, it's really nice to have the teammate. Like, the, it's, it's like so much easier, and uh, yeah, really good work from the team today. So I'm really happy. Yeah, they did do a smashing job. Is there anybody that you'd like to give a shout out to before you go? Uh, <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good, mate. All good. Well, yeah. um, quickly another one before you go. Actually, um, Daytona in two weeks' time. Are you confident about that one? Yeah. Um, so I did a 24-hour race with. The, the same team here and we were only two people in the car so I got quite a wow. <laughs> quite a bit of uh, practice in the GT3 car so wow, yeah I'm yeah. feeling good for that and uh, excited for the next race yeah me too mate well I look forward to that and uh, hopefully I'll speak to you then when you at least get a top five maybe even a podium or a win yeah thank you cheers mate brilliant stuff some fantastic guys in this championship really do love getting to know these drivers we're now joined by Henrik Furaseth in the chat as well. Good to see you, Henrik. That looked like a lot of fun out there with your teammate. Oh, yeah, it was a tough one. <laughs> it was all about fuel saving the whole race and uh, chatting with Ulla, uh, my teammate in front of me. So uh, it was a good one. Yeah, Spa is it's just one of those circuits that always brings out fantastic racing, no matter what car you're in, really. But um, I was just saying to Ola then as well, now that I finally know how to say his first name properly, um, it was... It was nice to have two teammates together right near the front because when you are sort of acting like the rear gunner or whether you're the one that's sort of spearheading the attack, it just gives you a bit more confidence, doesn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. So we were uh, the whole race chatting about uh, who was going to charge uh, to the end. We were just fuel saving the whole race and see if we could uh, to give Jarl a run at the end. But uh, we were both kind of close on the, on the ink limit. So uh, ah, okay. we weren't risking anything uh, at the end there. <laughs> so we were happy about uh, fourth and fifth there. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, he told me that the incident limit was set quite low, but uh, well, in comparison to other series as well. But I think that just shows the quality of this league, doesn't it? The fact that around a track like Spa, where we all know it's very easy to get incidents or incident points anyway, You've all done an amazing job to hold on to that. Did you find it was that much of a challenge over the race, or did you just get into a bit of a rhythm? Oh, it's the hardest challenge uh, for me uh, so far in my sim racing career. I mean, it was so many aspects during the race, uh, ink limit and um, and fuel saving, uh, and see if other people were going into the pits. So uh, the strategy was uh, was hard in this race. So uh, yeah, it was a tough one, but a lot of fun. Indeed, and another one that's going to be tough for sure is Daytona in two weeks' time. Now. I was just saying to some of the guys before in their interviews that Mind Games is going to be the name of the game around there and who is in front, who's behind, who's in the slipstream and obviously trying to fuel save again. What do you make of going to Daytona in these cars? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a, it's going to be a hard one there as well. Uh, I actually haven't driven that track uh, once uh, at all in the iRacing. So um, mm. 
it's going to be a it's going to be a good uh, practice leading up to the race, and we'll see how that goes. Well, I really hope it goes well for you, Henrik, and we'll see another good performance like tonight. Is there anybody that you'd like to give a quick shout out to before you go, mate? I'd like to get a, give a shout out to to my whole uh, to my whole Gas X Racing teammates crew. Uh, we had just uh, started the team a couple of weeks ago, and uh, wow, it's a really good group of guys. So, uh, and of course, uh, the sponsor for for this series, Hallingdal uh, Trafico Planning. Well, they've certainly been flying as well, mate, for a new team. So very well done to a lot of you. Great to speak to you, Henrik, and hopefully I'll see you at Daytona. Thank you very much. Yeah, I hope so. Cheers. What a fantastic bunch of guys we've got in this series. It's one of my very favourite things about sim racing is getting to know these drivers, getting to know the teams, everybody that just makes the heart of this championship beat, and it's just so much fun, and especially when they're all so great to speak to as well. So I really do appreciate the guys coming in and having a chat with me. But... This is the end of the evening, unfortunately, for me, for the stream, for this series. But Lasser back, what a performance by the Williams eSports driver. He was the fastest man out on track consistently. He saved the fuel while doing it, and he just dominated the event. Carl Janssen drove a very clever race as well. Real shame for Oscar to run out near the end, but that's one of the things these drivers will have to consider over the course of this championship. But thank you very much to everybody that has been watching this evening. The, the figures and the numbers... It all surpassed what I imagined tenfold on my lowly little YouTube channel. My name is Chaz Draker. I'm going to be your broadcaster and commentator for the whole series. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks' time at Daytona. Have a fantastic evening, everybody. See you soon.